Welcome back. We've been having lots of fun playing with Raspberry Pi and even a little bit of Arduino. Today I'm going to hook up a GPS module that I originally used with Arduino, but I'm going to hook it up to Raspberry Pi via serial using the GPIO pins. Let's check it out. So I cleaned out my maker drawer this weekend and organized all of my Arduino add-ons. And I was thinking I should be hooking these up to Raspberry Pi. I got that 10 degrees of freedom board. There was a distance sensor in there. This was all for Arduino. But we got the jumpers, so we're gonna try it with Raspberry Pi. Have a bunch of these GPS modules from my DIY drone days, basically. So we're gonna follow along with this article, how to handle Raspberry Pi serial reading and writing. So the equipment list includes a TTL converter board. We're not gonna use that. Instead, we're gonna substitute the Adafruit Ultimate GPS breakout. This article goes into great detail into what you need to do, wiring diagram, etc. But first we need to disable the console use of the serial connection on the Raspberry Pi. So you go into sudo raspy config. You want to select item 5 interfacing options. And you're disabling the login shell using that serial connection. That frees it up for us to plug in our GPS into it. On this second prompt you want to leave serial enabled. You need to reboot to make that effective. And then you can check and make sure you got it done by running that D message grep TTY. And here you can see that TTY capital S zero is not attached to the console any longer and it's free for serial. So let's get to wiring things up now. Here's a fun thing I stumbled across along the way. If you type pinout in a terminal, you get this wonderful little graphic display of the GPIO pins and some other information about your board. What makes this Adafruit GPS board ideal for Raspberry Pi is it runs at 3.3 volts. All the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi are 3.3 volts. If you look at the pin diagram, on the Raspberry Pi, there are 5 volt pins, but you wouldn't want to attach a 5 volt device to a GPIO pin because you would need a level shifter between them to take the 5 volts down to 3.3 volt. So the article references a 5 volt pin, but we're going to use a 3 volt pin. You can see that here in this wiring diagram. I have the red wire, the positive wire, going to pin 1, which is 3.3 volt, going to the 3.3 volt pin on the GPS module. Next, pin six is the ground, going to the ground on the GPS module. Then pin eight, which corresponds to GPIO 14, which is transmit in serial, goes to the receive pin on the GPS module. So transmit goes to receive. Then pin 10, which is GPIO 15, or receive on the Raspberry Pi, goes to transmit on the GPS module. Remember, transmit goes to receive and receive goes to transmit. This is how these devices will talk to each other. You can see that brown and orange wire across here. So we've booted back up and we're ready to run some Python. So we go back to our article. We're going to skip over the writing serial part and go straight to the reading serial part. And he breaks it all down here. Basically, you're setting up a serial port, speed, stop bits, parity. It's all there in the code. The only problem I had was when I ran this debugger wanted parentheses around the X in that print statement. Everything I've demonstrated here is part of the Raspbian full build and we're gonna launch Thawney now. I've taken the liberty of already typing the program in so you don't have to watch me type and we'll get right to running it. But first, let's take a read through the code. Import time, import serial. You need those libraries for this program. We're going to create an object called sear using serial.serial. 
We set up that port type as dev TTY capital S0. Your baud rate's 9600. Your parity is none. Stop bits is one. Byte size is serial 8 bits and timeout is one. And then at the bottom here, we're gonna loop while one, which is true, x equals sear read line. Read line is a function of serial that's been assigned to the object sear. And then print x. Now off we go. You can see here that the GPS module doesn't have a lock. It doesn't have enough satellites to come up with any sort of data. So there's just a bunch of zeros. You can make out there's like a time in here somewhere. We're just not locked into enough satellites to give us a reading. So when you look at the Adafruit GPS module, you'll see that flashing red light and it'll flash at that rate while it's trying to get a lock. This Adafruit module actually has a fixed light, which means you've connected with enough satellites to have a reliable fix. Okay, so finally we have enough satellites that we're getting a really accurate fix, and the fixed light isn't even on yet. I've blurred the GPS coordinate part of the screen because I looked it up on Google Maps. It shows you exactly where my house is, so I had to blur that out. Anyway, this is still raw data, so we want to go to this website to decode the various lines that we're getting there. Make sure to look for all of the links in the comment section below. The first one we're getting is the GPVTG, and this is uh, basically ground speed. Now we're getting GPGGA, which also has the GPS coordinates. You can't put in that four digit dot four digit or five digit dot four digit in the Google Maps, you have to decode it. Let's talk about how you have to decode that data. All right, so we see latitude is uh, four digit dot four digit, then comma N, longitude is five digit dot four digit. So the first two digits of the latitude is the degrees. The second two digits is the minutes. Now the dot point four places times 60 gives you the seconds and that's north so the longitude is the first three digits is the degrees the next two digits is the minutes and then that point four digits is the seconds but you have to multiply that again times 60 just like you did for the latitude GPGSA indicates uh, your relationship to the satellites, how many you're connected to, whether or not you've got a fix. Then we have GPRMC, which also gives you your GPS coordinates. We basically saw all four of these sentences go by. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed learning how to attach this Adafruit GPS breakout to a Raspberry Pi and interpret the output. Thank you very much. Shotoku Tech. Please subscribe, comment, like, and share. Thank you very much.